Hi, Hi. thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. Hello, Even great if My to brain talk to you. isn't all the way here. I'm good. And I just want to say, I am like a huge Stargate fan. I actually oh! went to the Atlanta set when it was first before, I think it might've been before it was open, but as a fan, not as a journalist, I was at wow. GateCon like years and years and years ago. So were you on my tour group? You know, I thought that there was a possibility I was, but it was so many years ago. I'd have to go yeah. look up all my non-digital pictures. To that find was out. so fun. I really wish we would do stuff like that more often, like to be able to, I don't want to waste your time here, but no, like to no, be no. able to have like the writers and like take, like fans around the actual sets and like we had so many of them it was a great tour that was so special i really i really wish we could do more stuff like that yeah Not, it was, i mean it was with covid time. times but yeah yeah sorry though i didn't mean to, to get off track i just wanted to say that no 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 but um so just to start you're integrating some things from the original show is there like a certain part of the show that if people haven't seen it because like i have not seen it like what would be the best part of it to go back and watch that would help me to pick up on all the special stuff i guess yeah i mean the great news is is you don't need to do that at all like it's like anything that like you wouldn't understand will be explained in the body of the episode and so there's not like a here are the 10 episodes like you should watch a quantum leap to like understand it we're gonna do all of that work for you and then if you happen to love the show so much that you want to go back and watch it then great but it's like you know it's like um uh you know, the best, the best version of it is like, you know, like you can watch the Mandalorian without having watched Clone mm -hmm. Wars and it still makes sense. If you happen to have watched Clone Wars, like that, it's like a slightly fuller experience occasionally, but it doesn't demand that you watch a hundred hours of Clone Wars first. All right. But there will be some things I take it for fans though. It sounds like that they'll kind of pick up on. There will be some Easter eggs certainly that I think will resonate, you know, moments like moments for, for mm -hmm. deep fans. But uh, again, it won't, it won't affect the viewing for new fans. Okay. It's got some mythology, but it's mostly kind of weekly. Can you talk a bit about that and how you decided how to go in that route, like how much to do of one versus the other? Yeah, I think collectively, just as like a network studio and all the writers, like we, we really felt like the show's called Quantum Leap. Like we want to do these leaps. Like we yeah. don't want to, we don't want to totally be like, ah, it's a different thing now. So like being able to go um, every week and have a close-ended adventure where Ben jumps into somebody and changes their life or the people around them's lives for the better is still the bread and butter of the show. But I think what's great is now we also get this like serialized mystery about like, why did Ben do this? And, and uh, why didn't he tell anyone? Um, what the hell is going on? That gets seeded kind of in the, in, the, uh, in the present day stories, as well as being able to talk about, you know, like Addison, obviously, you know, this was her fiance who doesn't remember her now. And so for her to have space to process what she's going through on the present day side was important as well and not just be so Ben focused, if that makes sense. Okay. And I know you said that you're not going to draw that part out forever either, which is good to know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, don't yeah, have to yeah. wait around. Um, well, I was going to ask you about where you, when you'd want to go, but I know everybody's going to ask you that. So I'm going to ask you it a little different. On okay. the other side of it, and, and obviously don't go, you know, don't go too personal, but um, is there some time in your life that you would want somebody else to kind of jump in and help you fix that that's oh. in your past? I figured that's a little bit different question there. Wow. Um, that's a great question. Thanks. Um, well, I'm about to have a kid, uh, like any well, minute congratulations. now, thank you so much. And so, and I, from what I understand, I won't be sleeping at all for the next, uh, <laughs> 10 years. So if someone wanted to just kind of like tag in and, uh, give me some rest, uh, and take over my body for a couple of days, that'd probably be fine. But also I wouldn't want to miss any of it. I don't know. It's really tough. Like, this is something we talk about in the room a lot about like, you know, like what can, what is Ben morally allowed to do when he's inside someone's body? Like he can't say yes to a proposal, for instance. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he can't make a big life decision because when they come to, it's going to just be changed. So, so yeah, no, I mean, it's a great question. I don't know that I have a great answer for it. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I just was curious. And you made me wonder though, and I guess the answer is probably no, but we're never going to see kind of the people come back and, and wonder like what happened to the last 24 hours of their lives, are we? <laughs> We actually have a way of dealing with that in the fourth episode where oh, we okay, kind cool. of explain what it's like for them uh, in a very personal and surprising way. And so, like, I think you'll be like if, if, if uh, uh, make it to episode four for sure, because there's, there's a really beautiful scene that like 
really walks the audience through what that's like in a way that is new information for, for um, everybody. Uh, for everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I wanted to ask, how did you, can you kind of talk about coming up with the design of the computers and everything? Because I, I assume that it's not going to be the same. How did you kind of come up with that whole design? Because it's like that whole room, big servers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, we just like, we were trying to, you know, like it was in 1989. So we wanted Ziggy to kind of look like those big server racks, you know, that were like the norm mm -hmm. in that era. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and that they've just kind of been upgrading. And now it's like on your phone, basically. But so like we wanted to have like Ziggy be just a massive presence in that set. Um, um, so that, that was part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Are you going to be writing and directing this season at all? Uh, I've written some and I don't think I'm going to be directing. It's just like show running is a, like <laughs> it's more hard than full-time all job the first season. And so, um, uh, I may direct as, 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 uh, as seasons go on, but like blind spot, I didn't really direct any blind spot until season two when you can finally like yeah. catch your breath a little bit, but it's all go, go, go over here. Yeah, I was gonna say it probably depends how much sleep you're getting too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's really a question for my my new child. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I had read that it says in the the cast list that Jewel State's coming in in the one episode. So at least in one episode, I don't know how many. So what was it like kind of working with her again? It's so great. I mean, I love Jewel. We've she's been on basically everything I've ever done, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's just great to have somebody that you know is gonna come in and just be like. An incredible ringer. This 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 series is a real showcase for guest actors, and so to have um, some familiar faces who you know are just going to knock it out of the park is so great. And yeah, she she'll be in episode six, and it's it's a really fantastic episode. Okay, great. What was sort of the hardest thing about bringing it from the original version to this version and getting it updated? Um, well, it's just a balancing act, right? Because like, we're all huge fans of the original, but we're making a show for people that probably aren't. So it's, it's but we, it's that balancing act between, again, just making, take all of the legacy away. Like we just got to make a great TV show, right? Like we just got to make a really fun, like people are looking for escapist fun, you know, um, they're looking to exercise their empathy, you know, and this show can do both at the same time. And so, um, uh, so that was like part one. And then part two is like, okay, is this, are we also building something that will honor what went before it? Won't have the fans be like, this isn't my quantum leap or like, you know, but also just again, just not be so deferential to it that we're, we're letting it affect what our primary job is, which is to just like entertain. Yeah, right, I get that. Well, I enjoyed the pilot very much. I do oh, want to go back and watch it. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing more. And yeah. So right, <laughs> not to look well, up those it's great pictures. to meet you again, maybe. Yeah, I think they're, they're not yeah. digital. You know, I have to go yeah, find exactly. them. They're in an album somewhere. <laughs> well, great All, right. Again. All right. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye now. Bye-bye.